you have just departed from an airport naturally as you start accelerating you want to clean up your aircraft when you select flaps one an ecam message comes up don't panic take a chill pill dear guests welcome back to the channel today let us talk about a qrh procedure namely landing with slats or flaps jam first let us look at the causes that contribute to abnormal behavior of the flaps and slats number one sfcc failure SFCC stands for Slats and Flaps Control Computer. So, if both computers fail, you will get jam flight controls. Number two, double hydraulic failure, especially blue and green hydraulic failure or yellow and green hydraulic failure. Number three, your flaps and slats get jammed because of the operation of the wingtip brakes. Wingtip brakes sometimes get activated when there is asymmetry, mechanism overspeed, runaway or uncommanded movements of the surfaces. Question is, what is a wingtip brake? Normally, when you select the flap lever and the flap and slats have reached the selected position, pressure of brakes or POBs lock the hydraulic motors to prevent unwanted movements. However, if there is a failure detected by the SFCC, the wingtip brakes will lock the slats or flaps position. Once the wingtip brakes are activated, it can only be reset on the ground. So what are the consequences of abnormal flaps and slats position? The control laws may change, selected speed must be used and you should stabilize early. The attitude of the aircraft will differ especially when you do not have flaps. The approach speed and landing distances will increase and you have to consider whether you can perform the go-around procedure. Your FMS fuel prediction is not valid as fuel consumption is increased. If a flaps or slats retraction problem happen at takeoff, pull the speed knob for selected speed. This will stop the speed from increasing and exceeding the VFE. Remember that the overspeed warning is computed based on the actual slats flaps position. If you are departing off a short runway, keep in mind that you may need to consider other airports for landing. When the failure occur during approach, be mindful of the speed because with auto thrust on, the aircraft will decelerate and so pull the speed knob, delay the approach to perform the ECAM procedure and refer to the QRH procedure. We need to select VFE next minus 5 knots so that we can continue to configure the aircraft in a safe manner. In this case, you might have to select the speed below the maneuvering speed which is acceptable provided your speed is above VLS. It will be best to select flaps on level flight. VLS speed is based on actual slats and flaps position so your V approach speed should be VLS plus wind correction. You can use the autopilot until 500 feet AGL and monitor the autopilot behavior carefully. Also, in your approach briefing, emphasize on tail strike awareness, go around configuration, your speed to be flown and callouts, and also your selected speed at acceleration altitude. If you need to divert with flaps and slats jam, think about your fuel consumption because your flight controls are extended and your maximum cruise altitude is limited to 20,000 feet. Okay, to deepen our understanding, let us run through a scenario. I will repeat again the most important points as we go along. You have just departed from an airport. Naturally, as you start accelerating, you want to clean up your aircraft. When you select flaps 1, an ECAM message comes up. Don't panic, take a chill pill. The first action you must do is to pull the speed knob to stop the aircraft from accelerating. Remember that the overspeed alert and the VLS on the PFD is based on the actual flaps and slats position, but the VFE and VFE next is based on the flaps lever position. Always remember to aviate, fly the aircraft, make sure that the aircraft is in a safe flight path and once you are stable, perform the ACAM actions. The first line of the ACAM is to confirm that you selected the speed below the maximum speed given. Question: What do you do when your computer freezes? Well, we normally shut down the system and restart it. Similarly, try to recycle the flap lever by returning to the previous position and then back to what you want it to be. If the flaps is extended, the fuel consumption is bound to increase. 
This makes the FMS field prediction unreliable. Once you clear the ECAM, perform the after takeoff climb checklist and read the status page. So, for the approach and landing, use flaps 3. If the flaps is stuck above flaps 3, then use config full. GPWS flap mode off if flaps is less than 3, and GPWS landing flap 3 on if flaps is more than 3. Apply the landing distance procedure. Okay, once ECAM actions are done, apply the QRH procedure. Apply the landing distance procedure. Back in the days where the QRH was as thick as my face, we can manually calculate the landing distance. But with the rise of computers, that also brings amazing movies. Now we can calculate the landing distance using FlySmart software. Pick the right problem. Now what is the right problem? Let's have a refresher. Slats have 4 positions and flaps have 5 positions. And the corresponding degrees are 0, 18, 22 and 27. For flaps, it is 0, 10, 15, 20 and 40 degrees. Older aircrafts have different numbers, so check it out yourself. Right back to the procedure, select VFE next minus 5 knots every time you want to configure. Remember that the overspeed alert and VLS speed is computed to actual flaps and slats position. The VFE and VFE next is shown on the PFD. Sometimes the go around speed might be above the VFE speed displayed on the PFD. Don't worry, the overspeed warning will not trigger as it takes into account actual slats flaps position. In case of overweight landing, VLS will be greater than VFE next. So for this, select the flaps lever to the next position and reduce the speed to follow the VLS reduction when the surfaces extend. Do note that VFE warning threshold will not be triggered. You can disconnect the auto thrust and re-engage it back when the landing configuration is established. When you are in landing configuration and in final approach, decelerate to your calculator V approach speed which you get on your FlySmart computer. And remember not to use autopilot below 500 feet AGL. Now let us look at the go around table. It shows the max speed for each configuration. You can open up the QRH to have a look. Essentially look at the position of the slats and flaps and check the max speed. For example, if your slats is at 1 and flaps is between 0 and 1, then your maximum speed is 215 knots. The QRH then continues if it is a slats fall, maintain your configuration and recommended speed is max speed minus 10 knots. In case you are diverting, select clean configuration and the recommended speed for flaps retraction is between max speed minus 10 and max speed. Question, what is the recommended diversion speed? Well, do comment below if you know the answer. Fuel consumption will increase. If it is a flats fault, for circuit, maintain your slats and flaps configuration and recommended speed is max speed minus 10 knots. If the failure is hydraulic green and yellow low pressure, then maintain the speed close to V approach speed. For diversion, if flaps is jammed at zero, select clean configuration. Recommended speed for slats retraction is between max speed minus 10 knots and maximum speed. Use normal operating speeds. If the failure is green and yellow hydraulic system low pressure, maintain and at least the higher of V approach or VLS. Now, what if flaps is jammed more than zero? In this case, maintain slats and flaps configuration. Diversion speed is maximum speed minus 10 knots. Special note is in case of go around with config full, the landing gear not down warning will be triggered if you retract the gears. If the failure is hydraulic green and yellow, low pressure, then maintain close to V approach speed. Fuel consumption will increase. So, in order to calculate the fuel consumption, check what is the fuel consumption in clean configuration at a certain altitude. Then multiply it with the fuel penalty factor in the QRH. For example, if flaps are locked and extended, the fuel consumption will increase by 80%. Do note that if you have flaps and no slats, your pitch angle on approach does not differ much. 
but if you are landing flapless, bear in mind that your pitch attitude may be higher and tail strike risk will increase. And last but not least, landing with no flaps or no slats will increase the landing distance by about 30% and we approach speed by 25 knots or up to 25 knots. However, landing with no flaps and no slats increases your landing distance by up to 60% and we approach speed by up to 40 knots. Again, these are just rough figures. So please do use your own calculation using the FlySmart software. Back in those days when we used to have our landing distance tables in the QRH, the numbers for landing distance and V approach speed were much higher.